if you are in a supporting role, if you are fixing customer problems and customers might be internal, then there's a few things that distinguish if you are going to be successful or not. If you're asking cust your end customers, uh, what do I need to do properly to be successful for you in, uh, in troubleshooting, and that troubleshooting could be problem solving, um, customers typically tell you a handful of things. And this is what we've gathered over the years. Customers come to you with a question, a problem, an incident, whatever it is, it, make, it, makes you, it makes them to expect you to support them. And not only that, but they're expecting you to support in a consistent matter. So that you can just, you, you're kind of reproduce, you can reproduce your success in finding, finding root causes, for example. Um, your customer wants clarity. That's the reason he's contacting you, which means that you have to take him by the hand for, the, for that particular incident or problem and to take him all the way till the point where his kit is up and running again, basically, or his application is running, is, is working fine again. Your customer would like to have a correct fix, which is asking you, as a troubleshooter, to fix the issue, to troubleshoot incisively, to get to the real solution there. Your customer needs their system back immediately, which is asking you to resolve <coughs> rather quickly. Your customer demands a permanent fix, so you should have some kind of mechanism that you could go through to come to a root cause, to come to a true cause of an issue. And your customer wants uptime, not problems, which makes that you have to think ahead of the curve. You have to be one step ahead, if you can, to avoid future trouble. Now, this is all about how do you treat problems once they are there? How do you treat incidents? Well, we'll take a closer look at problems today. Um, and if you're just approaching people with, an, with, a, with a methodology as to how can you fix a problem, a response that we often get is, uh, why do I need yet another process? I'm an expert on this product. Have you heard that? Have you seen that? You're laughing. <laughs> Sounds like it, right? Well, there's, there's many good reasons for, uh, for still following a process in, in, problem, in problem solving. Uh, and uh, one of the reasons could be that if you have a standardized approach in how you find root cause, you can make that visible. You can tell others where you are in that process. Um, you can help others to understand what their needs are. What kind of information do you need in this specific set, in this specific step in, tr in, the, in problem analysis, for example? Um, you can anticipate and prevent problems before they happen. And if you have a reproducible approach to problem solving, you might not only be able to shorten the amount of time to find root cause, but you, so, you may also uh, predict better how much time it's going to take. There will always be a variation. Sometimes some problems take longer than others. But if you have a standardized approach, it will be more predictable as to how much time is it going to take before we have uh, seen the light and found root cause. Okay. Well, there's the thinking process. And the thinking process could be problem fixing, finding root cause. But what goes into that are things like information, your experience, your judgment, your knowledge. That all goes into some kind of thinking process, which then leads to a well, root cause which is found at the end. Um, we sometimes take an uh, analogy here to cooking. Um, if you would like to make something nice, like bread, wine, beer, whatever you can think about, um, it takes ingredients and it takes a recipe to get to a result. The same applies for problem solving. You have some input, there's a recipe, and it gives you an output which could be a resolution, a root cause being found. Well, nobody likes average bread, nobody likes average beer, nobody likes average wine. You like to have good quality stuff. And you could see easily that it takes good quality ingredients and a good quality recipe to come to good re quality result. Well, the same applies in problem analysis. You need good quality input, good quality data. You need a good quality thinking process to get to a good quality root cause being found. And this is kind of the space where KT as a company is acting. This is where rational thinking comes into play. 
Because what we provide you is the tools to gather good quality input, to go through a good quality thinking process, to come to a good quality resolution. Where resolution can be a decision, it can be a problem being solved, it can be a risk being anticipated and so on. And we'll see a bit more about that in a moment. Actually, there's a few thinking processes that we typically use. The one that you can always apply is situation appraisal, to sort out your concerns, basically, and prioritize them. Basically, the customer calls you, and he has an issue that you don't know about it yet. But the reason he called you is, he, is the fact that he would like to have your support. So situation appraisal could be your starting point to find out what is it that the customer needs help with. And based on the information, you're, what, what do you call this in, 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 in ITIL, by the way? When a customer calls you and is asking for some help, what does that, what is the equivalent? It might that? be a service request. Service, service yeah. request. Yeah. So we're stepping into what kind of process in, our, in the ITIL space here? Is that incident management? Yeah, it's mostly incident management. Well, instead of incidents, Kepler Trigger talks about concerns. But concerns and incidents, if you look at the definitions that we use on both sides of the story, they are very close to each other. Well, some incidents may make it to a problem and a root cause needs to be found. For some incidents, some concerns, a decision needs to be made or a risk needs to be uh, anticipated appropriately. But you can see that in a help desk type of environment, uh, most of the time is being spent in finding out what the exact issue is and if it's a problem, if the issue moves to problem management space, finding root cause is the most used approach. If you're in a change environment, in ITIL, then decisions are there. I heard This morning I heard uh, Don and Alan talking about uh, the approving mechanism in Marvel for changes. Well, that's about the making of decisions. Do I approve, do I not? What criteria do you use and how do you get to a decision based on rational thinking. If you're making a change, you would like to have that change go well. Well, there, there's a bit of risk assessment that you can do for each change. And if you don't, maybe you don't want to approve the change at all. Well, that's how Katie and, uh, and Marfal are getting quite close to each other in their approaches. If you look at the full process, <laughs> there's the big picture. You can always start with a situation appraisal to get the complete view of all the concerns. And based on, on that, you may go to problem analysis. Some concerns may have to go into decision analysis and some others may need risks to be anticipated.